So what I'm about to share with you is incredibly shocking and disturbing. But if you stay for the video, I think we can have some really good insights about this. And hopefully we can help create awareness about topics like this, as gruesome as they are, that need to be spoken about more widely. Because I do believe this is a very serious issue, not just for the animals, but also for society at large. So recently there was a double murder. The details of this case are absolutely shocking, but to me, they're not entirely surprising because of the nature of the perpetrator's work. So I'm just going to read out this story for you, but I have to give you a warning. This is quite graphic. So two abattoir workers, slaughterhouse workers, tortured two acquaintances to death before mutilating them in a gruesome echo of their butchery work, a court has heard. So it goes on to name the perpetrators and the victims. The jury heard two offendants from Hillfields had met with Mackenzie 56 through their work at the abattoir near Bristol, where their job involved making incisions in the bellies of pigs. Mr. Pramanik, 27, was unknown to either defendant and had been visiting Mackenzie from London on the night of the murders. When the murders were discovered, police found the mutilated bodies of both victims in the living room of the Wood Street property. Mackenzie had been stabbed 23 times, while Mr. Pramanik had been stabbed three times to the back and abdomen. One of Mr. Pramanik's wounds was 46 centimetres deep. <sighs> Brutal. That stab wound was done with intent to kill. The prosecutor said... There was an element of macabre display about how these bodies had been dealt with. After his death, Mr. Pramanik had been disemboweled in a gruesome echo of the butchering the defendants carried out at the abattoir on pigs. That's the terrible state in which the two bodies were left. So basically, another interesting element of this is that the abattoir workers killed co-workers who had been paying for sex. The jury is told Bobok, one of the perpetrators, had previously had an arrangement with Mr. McKenzie where he performed sex hacks on him in exchange for cash. On the night of the killing, Bobok sent Mr. McKenzie a series of messages trying to persuade him to let him come over so he could give him a present. So there is a sexual element to this murder as well, which is interesting when you look at some of the research on this. It should come as no surprise that if you stab innocent beings all day, that it's not a far jump to stab human beings. I've been saying this for years. When you have animals that you're dominating at work all day, they're terrified and then you're killing them against their will, they're struggling and you're doing that day in, day out, you become conditioned to an extreme level of violence. I know what it's like to have a family member be stabbed to death. I lost my uncle uh, to a stabbing. Incredibly difficult to deal with, so my heart goes out to the family. Now, the Mail Online reported on this as well. CCTV footage produced in court today showed a pair of abattoir workers entering and exiting a house of horrors, where they are accused of torturing and stabbing two victims to death before mutilating their bodies and laying them out like butchered pigs. The two victims were stabbed multiple times with some injuries resembling the way they would have butchered animals at their place of work. So Mackenzie suffered 23 knife wounds, and there were signs he had been tortured with cuts around his eye, on his eyeball, and on his big toenail. So stabbing someone 23 times is incredibly sadistic and that comes from a place of anger um they were really trying to kill him there and maybe it was something to do with the sexual element of this and also coupled with the fact that you're conditioned to violence i know how easy it is to get conditioned to violence i come from the gang uh, world gang culture and um violence was just a second language in that world basically it's the way that you dealt with all issues and violence is something that you become conditioned to slowly at first it really shocks you after a while you just become used to it and you start leveling up the extremity of the violence as you become more conditioned so these perpetrators were already conditioned to an extreme level of violence so it makes complete sense that they're able to commit such a horrible act of violence on a human being because when you hear pigs being murdered they scream like human beings. So that's desensitizing people to another level. And those people then go out and operate in society. And that's an incredibly scary thought. Now, is this the only time this has happened? No. So we have a former Hunter Valley abattoir worker has been sentenced to a maximum six years jail for fatally stabbing his friend. There we go. That's another person uh, committing a stabbing who'd been stabbing animals all day at work. Here's another one. Homicide detectives have charged a former abattoir worker with the murder of a 17-year-old schoolgirl, Michelle Bright, who vanished after a birthday party in tight-knit town of Gulgong more than two decades ago. Wow. So there we go. We've got the, the domination mindset when you're dominating and killing animals all day. And this man here has inflicted, you know, that mindset on a 17-year-old schoolgirl. You know what I mean? Because think of the mentality. 
think of the mentality. You have you have animals that you're dominating all day. The animals are terrified. This gives uh, people a sense of power. And then they're killing the animals, and that's more power. It's desensitization to violence. So here we are. We have it overflowing onto society. Very, very dangerous. These places are like breeding grounds for people who are conditioned to an extreme level of violence who, if the conditions are right on the outside, can act out that violence. Maybe they get drunk one night. Maybe they have a lot of anger. Maybe there's a knife nearby. And boom, they act it out on human beings. Now, this one here is probably one of the more shocking ones that I've seen. But again, not the only example of this. There's a woman called Catherine Knight who was convicted of the murder of her partner, John Charles Thomas Price, in February 2000 and is currently imprisoned at the Silverwater Women's Correctional Centre in New South Wales. Knight stabbed Price to death, skinned him, and then put his skin on a meat hook. She then cooked his head and parts of his body with the intention of feeding them to Price's children, but was stopped by police. Wow. She worked at the local slaughterhouse for years, starting as a general labourer in 1971. At 15, Catherine left Musselbrook High School. She could barely read or write and had no qualifications. Her one great hope in life, her aspiration in life, was to work at the abattoir. Her one aspiration was to work at the abattoir. She wanted to go where her brothers went, her father went, her mother had been, her grandfather had been. Everyone she knew and respected worked at the abattoir. Wow, so her whole family worked at the abattoir as well. Everyone that she knew and respected killed animals all day. At 16, she landed her dream job. She began in the offal room and later became a boner. Her dream job. She landed in the offal room, which is basically the, the guts, organs of the animals cutting those out. They used to bone 600 a day. It'd kill 600 a day at the end. But, uh, yeah, it was just a f like everybody in Aberdeen used to work at the meatworks. Everybody at Aberdeen used to work at the meatworks. They were killing 600 cows there a day. So that's just a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Catherine was in her element. A lot of the women and a lot of the, a lot of the people used to come up out of the bone room and stand there and watch through their dinner out, watch the people slaughter the cattle. It wasn't unusual. The best part about the job was that she was given her own set of knives, blades that soon became her most prized possession. Great, so she's a psycho, already kind of disturbed, and now she's got a bunch of knives. There was something disturbing about the way Catherine loved to work. Other workers talk of her nicking arteries just to watch, watch the carcasses bleed or the animals bleed. She took a sort of malevolent pleasure in death. So here we have this example of Catherine Knight who went on to murder her husband and cut up his body parts and then attempted to feed him to his own children, who was already a little disturbed, working in a slaughterhouse, getting off on killing animals. Um, so these places, slaughterhouses, they're like either breeding grounds for conditioned people or they're like magnets to people who are already psychologically disturbed. Maybe it was the conditions at home that conditioned her to be disturbed and then when she was already disturbed she gravitated towards the slaughterhouse work and she liked doing that to the animals and then boom bang she's cutting her husband's head off cooking it in a stew so we hear stories all the time of slaughterhouse workers doing horrible things to animals now they were they already disturbed and then they gravitated to that work or did the work exacerbate this urge that they had condition them to further levels of violence and it's a very particular specific kind of environment a slaughterhouse the visceral smells of the blood and the fear of the animals it's much different being inside a slaughterhouse and working in there than it is to just watch it on on this tv screen there's so many more elements there's this i've been inside a slaughterhouse smelled the blood it's horrible horrible place sticky um plasma on the grounds and yeah it's just it's a psychotic work environment the post-mortem examination revealed that her husband, Mr. Price, had been stabbed at least 37 times. 37 times. That's psychotic behavior. That wasn't, hey, I'm going to stab you once, I'm going to stab you twice, which is still quite horrible. Say in self-defense, bang, I'll stab you and I'll run. Um, 37 times is horrifying. After he'd been dead for some time, his body was dragged uh, into the hallway in the lounge room, and thereafter, she skinned Mr. Price's body. So she skinned him like a cow. 
yes, horrible to do that to a human being, but also horrible to do it to the cow. So why don't we view the animals that are being skinned and decapitated and eaten, boiled up in a stew, the same way as we are viewing this horrible story of Mr. Price being skinned, decapitated and put in a stew. She was doing this severing arteries of animals, cutting their heads off all day at work, and it's completely socially acceptable. She does it to a human being. It's an absolute tragedy. I think they're both tragedies and they're both morally unacceptable and we should look at them in a similar light. The killing was carried out with considerable expertise. She'd basically been training all bloody week at work for this. So expertly done that after the post-mortem examination, the skin was able to be re-sewn onto Mr. Price's body in a way which indicated a clear, appropriate, albeit gr grisly mythology. So basically she, she skinned him with precision. You know what I'm saying? Not only was Mr. Price's head removed, but parts of his buttocks were also sliced off. So basically she was cooking rump steak. Um, you know, human rump steak. That's that's what a cow's rump steak is. It's their buttocks. So basically, oh, this is horrible. She peeled and prepared various vegetables. She cooked Mr. Price's head in a large pot together with a number of vegetables she had prepared so as to produce a sickening stew. A sickening stew? It's meat. It's a sickening stew if it has cow in there too. You know what I'm saying? They're both sickening. So yeah, there's more There's more examples of this. A former slaughterhouse worker was jailed for life on Thursday for abducting and killing a five-year-old. So he's a pedophile. The judge, the judge labeled him a pedophile. April, who had cerebral palsy, vanished as she played on a bicycle near her home in the town of Macklinith um, in Mid Wales in October 2012. Her body has never been found. The judge said, there's no doubt in my mind that you are a pedophile who has for some time harbored sexual and morbid fantasies about young girls. You abducted her for sexual purposes, then you murdered her and disposed of her body to hide the evidence for your sexual abuse of her. Horrible, horrible. So there, there is some research on people who work in slaughterhouses and how they're more predisposed to certain behaviors, certain antisocial behaviors. Crime rates, an empirical analysis of the spillover from the jungle into the surrounding community. The findings indicate that slaughterhouse employment increases total arrest rates, arrests for violent crimes, arrests for rape, and arrests for other sex offenses in comparison with other industries. And then there's the psychological impact of slaughterhouse employment, a systematic review of the literature. So this one here is that this is a systematic review, albeit the, the research is kind of difficult to get because they can't get into slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouses don't really want to cooperate because they don't want their researchers to find anything disturbing about slaughterhouse workers. It's really hard to find a causal link. You have to use like these correlates, but there is some evidence that slaughterhouse work is associated with increased crime levels. The research reviewed has shown a link between slaughterhouse work and antisocial behavior generally and sexual offending specifically. So there's the sexual offending link, and uh, that makes sense with the dominating of the animals, and what underpins the sexual offending is typically like a power play, you know, and uh, there's a victim and a oppressor, which is the, the nature of a slaughterhouse, isn't it? Very interesting. Now, for me, like, yes, the, there is research on this, but it just makes complete logical sense that when you have a killing factory where people are in there, all day, every day, blood, fear, feces, terrified living beings. When you're in there being conditioned every single day, you go home, you eat the bodies of these victims. You know, look at the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Jeffrey Dahmer practiced on animals first. He was already eating meat. There's another cannibal named Arthur Shaw Cross who compared eating humans to the taste of pork. I mean, look... You put people in these conditions, you put people in this society that's conditioned to this violence, to eating tortured, murdered animals, to killing animals all day, to viewing animals as objects and dominating animals and thinking that we're just so superior to animals, we can do what we want with them. You can understand why people in society are so disturbed and that's quite a scary, scary thought to know that there's a slaughterhouse just outside of every town and every city, in every country on earth. That's not to say that everyone works in a slaughterhouse is going to work in a kill floor and everyone that works in a slaughterhouse is a psychopath. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we're increasing the probability of this happening by a lot because of the nature of the work. Not that slaughterhouses give a damn about their workers anyway. Capitalizing off vulnerable people, uh, usually immigrants, people who don't really have a better option or people who can't really because of their skill sets and because of their education and many factors can't find better work so it's the best job they have available to them there was recently a story emerged where the labor department finds 31 children cleaning meat packing plants so packers sanitation services allegedly employed dozens of miners to clean killing floors and cutting machines in nebraska minnesota child labor but 
inside of a killing factory where there's blood and the, the cleaning jobs on killing floors are just some of the most horrible. There's body parts everywhere. The mix of boys and girls were not fluent English speakers and were interviewed mostly in Spanish. Initial evidence also indicates the company may also employ more kids under similar conditions at 400 of their other sites across the country. Wow. So they've got miners in here cleaning slaughterhouses, which is against the law, but it's also an incredibly disturbing thing to do to children is to put them through that horror on a kill floor. You know, the body parts everywhere and the blood everywhere. But just as horrible to feed your children the remnants of these slaughterhouses at your dinner table, I think that keeping what happens to animals from children in slaughterhouses is highly disturbing and then they could grow up confused, maybe disturbed, maybe have very sadistic views about animals and very speciesist views, discriminating against animals, and that could spill over as well. So basically a double murder. They treated their victims like they treat the animals in a slaughterhouse. Incredibly sad, incredibly shocking, in incredibly traumatic for the families involved. But also we need to spare a thought for the animals who have to go through this every single day by the million, by the billion. Strung up, slashed throat, no mercy, suffering in factory farms, treated with contempt, abused, you know, every second knives going into their necks, guts being spilled out into the floor. So with more stories like this emerging, I think we should seriously think about where we're putting our money. We shouldn't be putting our money into slaughterhouses. We should be putting our money into a plant-based food system. Do not support these horrible places. I want to see a world without slaughterhouses. I want to see a world where people do not view animals like this. I want to see a world where people are not murdered. I think there are major changes we can implement in society that would greatly lessen the probability of things like this manifesting. So please oppose the murder of all beings by living vegan. Peace.